Hello guys, I wanted to talk with you today about uh, the Ukrainian president, uh, Vol Volodymyr Zelensky. I wanted to discuss some of his media prowess and uh, address in one video more of his background and how he's used media uh, to get to the position of power that he is in today. And then I'd like to make another video addressing his most recent use of social media and how he's gone from being a an obscure uh, Eastern European president to being uh, one of the most recognizable figures of uh, modern politics. You know, he's he's one of the most recognizable faces of, of uh, leaders all over the world now. And before the uh, Ukraine war, I you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to put a face to the name, but, um, so what I wanted to address first was uh, that he had an extensive history as a comedian. Well, he, I, I believe he started in law school and yeah, he, he got a law degree and then he got into comedy and broadcasting and Eventually, eventually he was part of this channel called uh, this channel called KVN, where he did comedy, and then moved on to ex expand into what is called Kvartal ninety five. Kvartal means a quarter in Ukrainian, so that was a a network that kind of branched out of that and became its own thing out of KVN, Kvartal became his network, uh, if I understand that correctly. And then, so he had a, uh, a media arm behind him at that point, and that uh, was by 2003. He had, uh, he had significant influence, if not total ownership. Uh, if, I, uh, if I understand correctly, he uh, was the main, if not the founder of, of Kvartal. So he has taken, you know, he, he's taken his comedy uh, away from the original uh, channel where he started and then moved on to his own thing. And then uh, he's, he started in a number of, um, he was in a number of sitcoms and, uh, or romantic comedies, I believe. He did he did a number of romantic comedies and, and several other movies over the last uh, 10 years before running for president. And then, <clears throat> so finally in 2018, at the, at the in 2018, uh, it's important to mention that in that, in March of 2018, he starts his political party, Servant of the People, Actually, let me rewind a second. Okay, so Servant of the People is Zelensky's TV series that was produced by Kvartal 95. Uh, so using his broadcasting abilities, he produces Servant of the People starting in March, or starting in 2015, he, he started that series. And then, uh, has sent, and then he turns, uh, that into it's actually a, it's actually there are three seasons that went on until 2019 and uh, the first one is available on YouTube or on Netflix now uh, I have yet to watch Servant of the People I I want to see it I'm gonna see it soon and I'd like to talk about that as well but from my understanding it's a movie about a school te it's a series about a school teacher who gives some kind of viral he gives some kind of rant or tirade that is recorded and goes viral, and then that catapults him somehow into political power, and he becomes president. And so that series, of course, led right up to his actual uh, efforts to running for president. So, so his background in comedy, he he gets involved in Kvartal uh, almost t 20 years ago, and. In 2015, he starts uh, *Servant of the People*, and he and that had had three seasons, uh, and and of course that 
series Servant of the People was produced by Gavartel. Uh, <clears throat> so, he, so on March of 2018, Servant of the People, it becomes a registered political party in the Ukraine. So not only is it a, a TV series, but that TV series lends its name to the political party that was created in March of 2018. And by October of 2018, just six months later, uh, Zelensky becomes the unofficial frontrunner, according to the opinion polls. And by December, or, and then, it, but he hadn't officially announced his candidacy yet. And so by December of that year, uh, by, by New Year's Eve, he announces his candidacy officially. And it happens to be on the same night that the incumbent president, uh, Poros Poroshenko, was also going to announce his candidacy. So Zelensky somehow knew and arranged for his can uh, candidacy to be announced before, and then he steals the thunder and he kind of takes the wind out of the sails of, of um, Poroshenko, and and, uh, and Poroshenko's uh, candidacy was announced later. Uh, it was basically a bump almost. Uh, upstaged so and as he so what's fascinating in his in his so in his candidacy and this is uh, very minimalized here but in his candidacy he uh, avoided policy generally from what I've heard he he's uh, he had a lot of strong anti-establishment messages which makes sense given uh, the, the rise of populism across the world in, at this time and and uh, and it probably bears truth throughout his uh, his series as well as is a subject matter that comes up a lot, uh, being that it's about it's called serving other people, uh, and so when he would give interviews, he avoided mainstream media generally speaking, and which is ironic because he was a part of mainstream media and and has his own um, hands in mainstream media, but so he. So he avoided mainstream media and focused on social media, and and uh, apparently he did a lot of YouTube clips and 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 reached out through social media and that kind of thing. So so he's taking a new direction there. He's avoiding mainstream media. He's focusing on social media and and YouTube and things like that, and getting himself in front of a camera, and which will become more familiar to all of us uh, just a few years later. Um, and he did very. He didn't do a lot of rallies. Instead, he focused on comedy acts produced by Kvartal, his his uh, his media arm. So he really uh, he he avoided giving other people fuel to, to work with. It seems like because because if you go into interviews on other people's, uh, you know, if you take an interview from on a mainstream news channel, you. You can find that your your clips your, or your what you say can be cut down into clips and cut in all kinds of ways and edited to where uh, what you said bears no meaning or any resemblance to what you uh, what 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 is said uh, uh, broadcasted it bears no resemblance to what you said. So I understand his his logic there, uh, and being given that he had the power to promote himself. Uh, he, he clearly did, and it worked very well, and uh, he won the presidency with, like, seven, I think over 70% of the vote, which is almost unheard of in, in these days, and at least in American politics. I, I sure don't know a lot about Ukrainian politics, but so he took a little bit of a unorthodox, well, a very unorthodox approach here, so he, he created this, he created this media arm that could help promote his content, which uh, eventually culminated in Servant of the People, which inspired a political party which he created during the air and during the lifetime of this of the series. In 2018, he created the political party named after the series, which and then used a series of anti-establishment messaging, as well as uh, public outreach through social media and avoidance of mainstream media, and and instead of doing a lot of big rallies he focused on promoting comedy acts and, and satire I would imagine so uh, very fascinating approach and it clearly worked out very well for him and I, this video can't do enough justice so I'm going to approach it again uh, to talk more about how he's become much more relevant now and I, I'm gonna talk about his modern relevance 
uh, uh, post the Ukraine war, and and I'd like to address Servant of the People once I've watched that as well, the, the TV series on Netflix, which you know, I recommend anybody to check out. I'm, I'm going to check it out too and get back to you guys on that. So thank you for your time.